Last season, there were lots of moments when a player on the 49ers would get hurt, and it seemed like the 49ers were out of luck. Like when Akella Witherspoon got hurt against the Steelers, the next week, Emmanuel Mosley, an undrafted free agent really no one had heard of, had to start and cover Odell Beckham Jr. No problem. Mosley started most of the season and was really good. Then there was Quan Alexander, Torres Peck, midway through the season, got replaced by a rookie fifth round pick, Dre Greenlaw, who had to replace the leader of the defense. Again, no problem. Then there was Weston Richburg, the highly priced veteran center on the 49ers who makes all the line calls and is really important to their run game. Torres Patella, Ben Garland, a veteran who had very little game experience, came in, replaced Weston Richburg, no problem, played well throughout the playoffs. Every time someone got hurt, it seemed like the Niners had a backup who could just step in and play just as well as the starter. That's what makes the Niners special and unique and different from the rest of the league. And I have a suspicion that there's a next wave of underused gems just waiting on the bench that could have an increased role in 2020. I'm going to give you five names of players who should play even more next year than they played last year. I'm going to start with an obvious name, Raheem Mostert. He did get a lot of playing time last season. He was a breakout star, averaged five and a half yards per carry, rushed for 220 yards and four touchdowns in the NFC Championship game, but he never started. He was a backup. And the 49ers limited his role in addition. I mean, typically he wouldn't get more than 12, 10 to 12 carries a game. Sometimes he got more than that, but only a couple of times. They mostly used him as a backup change of pace guy, not because he wasn't good or hadn't earned an increased role. He had a knee issue. He was on the Uh, team's injury report for five consecutive weeks with a knee injury and was questionable, listed as questionable. So it's reasonable to assume that the Niners were managing that injury last season and trying not to overuse Mostert, who was so dynamite in his role of 10 to 12 carries a game. Well, next season, the knee shouldn't be an issue, uh, meaning his role should increase. 10 to 12 is not enough for a guy who's averaging 5.6 yards per carry in the NFL. Not enough. They got to give him more and more carries and see when the efficiency starts to drop off, if ever. Meaning expect 15 to 18 carries a game for Mostert next season. Because if he averages only 15 and continues to gain five and a half yards a pop, he'll put up 1,400 yards next season. So look for Mostert to have a monster 2020. Name number two, tight end Ross Dwelly. The guy wasn't even supposed to make the team last year. They The Niners had George Kittle. They signed Levine Toilolo and drafted Caden Smith in the sixth round. Those were supposed to be the three tight ends. But in training camp, Ross Dwelly showed that he's better than Caden Smith. Dwelly just has an ability to get open. He's not fast, but he gets open and he has great hands. Great hand-eye coordination, never drops a pass. So he developed a little mini role for himself on the team that didn't really exist the last couple of years. He is the pass-catching specialist of the backup tight ends. He got 22 targets last year, caught 15 of those passes, gained eight first downs, and scored two touchdowns. And if you remember, a lot of his catches were like gotta have it catches on third down, fourth and three, things like that, where he he even made one catch where he dove in the pouring rain in Washington on fourth down and caught it. It might have been the most difficult catch of the year. So the Niners know that He's shorthanded, he's going to catch the ball, and he can improve their red zone offense. As as good as the Niners were last year, their red zone offense ranked only 20th out of 32 teams. Look for the Niners to get Dwelly more involved in the red zone because a more involved Dwelly can improve that red zone offense drastically. Three, Daniel Brunskill, another no-name guy a year ago. He was playing in the Alliance of American Football, which doesn't even exist anymore. It's like it was one of those uh, semi-pro leagues or whatever, uh, minor league leagues. So he was on the San Diego fleet. The Niners spotted him, signed him. He was a camp body, made the team as a long shot. Then by week six, he's starting at right tackle because uh, Mike McGlinchey had injured his knee. Brunskill, a guy, a no name, starts at four weeks for four weeks at right tackle and plays great. There's no difference really that you could notice between Brunskill and McGlinchey. Then a few weeks later, Brunskill has to start at left tackle because Joe Staley had broken his finger. Plays terrific. 
at left tackle. Then the last two seasons of the the last two games of the regular season starts at right guard for Mike Person, who had a neck injury. In retrospect, the Niners should have kept Brunskill at right guard because Person came back for the playoffs and really ha had a meltdown in the Super Bowl. Was one of the worst players, if not the worst player, on the field, and a major reason the 49ers lost. Uh, he just couldn't block Chris Jones in the fourth quarter. So Brunskill, Person's gone. The Niners cut him. Brunskill is now the favorite to start at right guard next year, uh, next season. So. Better late than never on that one. Let's go to the defense now. Name number four, defensive tackle Julian Taylor. Been on the team a couple of years, played well in preseason, but never really had a role because the Niners had to force Buckner. Uh, very powerful player. Um, and I want to mention him in conjunction with Javon Kinlaw, the rookie that the Niners just drafted. Will the Niners use Kinlaw like they used Buckner as a rookie? Buckner came in, started, and played a thousand snaps as a rookie. Um, or will they use him the way they used Eric Armstead as a rookie? Uh, didn't start, but came in in the nickel defense as a pass rusher. The, the very best defensive tackles usually start right away, like Buckner. But a lot of times, rookie defensive linemen, I'm thinking Alden Smith, Eric Armstead, benefit from a reduced role. You know, don't start, don't worry about run defense and pass rush. Just come off the bench and worry about one thing, rushing the quarterback. Um, if that's what the Niners decide to do with Javon Kinlaw, it it would make sense, then the obvious platoon mate for him would be Julian Taylor. Julian Taylor could start at defensive tackle play in the base defense and be the run stuffer. Stout, strong, powerful, um, would allow Kinlaw to just focus on rushing the quarterback. So look for Julian Taylor to actually compete for a starting job next season. Final name, Tavarius Moore. Remember, he was a cornerback in 2018, became a free safety last year, and started at free safety the entire training camp because Jimmy, Jimmy Ward broke his collarbone. I was there at training camp. I watched every day. Tavarius Moore was one of the best players in the starting defense. It dominated the Niners' offense daily, and Tavarius Moore was one of the defense's leaders in interception. I mean, he intercepted Jimmy Garoppolo a few times. Uh, Jimmy Ward was supposed to re retake the starting job for week one, but then he broke his finger in practice. So Moore started the first three uh, weeks and dropped an interception week one against the Bucks in the end zone. Nice play, got to finish it. Eventually got benched because he missed a couple of tackles in the open field. Basically took the wrong angle and let a guy run right by him. It's a major no-no for a starting NFL free safety, but under an understandable mistake for a youngster who had very little experience, no experience playing safety in the NFL. Uh, something you'd figure he would improve with on uh, under Robert Sala and with experience and practice in games. So... Lost his starting job. Jimmy Ward came back. Jimmy Ward's a solid tackler, good player. Um, but the Niners didn't give up on Tavarius Moore. They created a role for him in their dime defense. When they go uh, six defensive backs, they bring Jimmy Ward down from safety, put him at nickel, and bring Tavarius Moore in the game, put him at free safety. He was good in this role. And in the, and in the Super Bowl, he intercepted a pass. Uh, Tavarius Moore, I've seen him play for a year. He is frequently around the ball. He breaks up and intercepts lots of passes. Uh, once he figures out how to take the right angles in the open field, it's going to be hard to keep him on the bench because as solid as Jimmy Ward is, as good of a tackler as he is, as versatile as he is, he hasn't intercepted a pass since 2016. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of time before Tavarius Moore replaces him at free safety.